Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Chelsea again. Happy Friday. I am back today um, with a topic from our partner program, uh, Unauthorized Practice of Law, which is something that a lot of our partners have expressed concern about or wanting to learn more about. Um, and just to recap for anyone that might be new, um, our partner program is a special type of accounts that we have available for um, anybody, any type of professional that may want to offer our services to their clients. It's not limited to just CPAs and accounts, but uh, we do tend to have a lot of people from that profession. But any type of business that you may be in where you run across clients that could use assistance with entity formations or filings, um, you can join our partner program. And then once you're a partner with us, you have the ability to resell our services as your own, or you can just refer them over to us, let us do all the work directly with them, and you'll earn a referral fee. Or you can pass on the discount if you're not comfortable accepting referral fees. Um, and just a reminder too, um, feel free to post any questions in the comment below, uh, in the comment section below, and I will uh, be sure to answer them. Um, so we did a pre-recording last week with a uh, slideshow, which went over a couple of um, different points on the myth of legal advice and uh, basically the myth that only attorneys can set up um, entities or do other sorts of state filings. Um, so just as like a, a short recap from what we went over in that video, accountants, CPAs, and other professionals, just anyone essentially, um, can set up business entities. Um, because essentially, um, when you're setting up a business entity, you're collecting information and you're submitting that information to the state. So that's what we're doing, um, and that's what you can do as well uh, when you resell our services. Um, also, you have an additional advantage if you're a CPA um, or accountants or tax preparer that we don't have, um, which is that you can give your clients information on how they'll be taxed with certain entity types, um, which is, you know, typically when uh, you know, people are setting up a business entity, the main concerns to them are, you know, what's going to save me the most in taxes or what's going to make the most sense for me tax-wise. So you are in the best position to be able to give your clients information on that aspect. Um, also, um, a lot of, uh, a lot of our partners have concerns about answering questions because um, a lot of the times when you are speaking with the client that's interested in setting up an entity, they'll ask, you know, questions that are framed in a way where they want your advice, like which entity type is best for me. Um, so if you were to answer that in a way where you're giving them your opinion, that is legal advice, which is something that you can uh, get into trouble for if you're not actually an attorney. So, um, you know, with Corpornet, uh, with us as account representatives, we go through a lot of training before we ever talk to any clients to ensure that we know how to answer those questions so we're not giving advice. And um, we're here for you as well if you have concerns or you're unsure about, you know, how to help your clients in a way that you're not giving advice, or if it's just something that's really uncomfortable to you, just refer them over to us and let us handle it all. But um, we're definitely here if this is a topic that, you know, you have questions about and you're unsure about how to um, handle and make sure that you don't do anything that could possibly get you in trouble or where you would be disturbing, you know, doing a disservice to your clients by giving them information you're not qualified to give. Um, so we are going to open up the floor to some questions. The first question I see, um, could you detail some of the liability ramifications that I need to be aware of to avoid? So on this topic, the biggest um, liability in general would just be that you do uh, say something that could be taken as legal advice and say your client uh, follows that advice and then later on they've been informed that that may have not been the best thing for them to do or they have some sort of negative consequence as a result of information that you gave them. So what we do to ensure that we're avoiding this is any information that I give, uh, whether by email or by phone, 
it is never phrased in a way where it is me um, telling them something that would be best for them. So for example, if they say, I don't know which entity type um, I should select, can you help me what's best for me? Um, also too, if you're uncomfortable, you could just start off right off the bat with a disclaimer. I just wanna make sure you're aware, I'm not an attorney. Any information I give you should not be interpreted as legal advice. I'm simply providing you with information, answering questions. If you do require legal advice, please seek out the help of an attorney. Sometimes I'll say that, you know, it just depends on the situation. Can't go wrong with extra disclaimers. But um, back to that question, if they, you know, ask for, you know, can you help me what's best for me? I'll say, well, I can give you information on different entity types, um, how they're structured, what the compliance will look like each year, what the initial cost will be. Um, for example, you know, if they're not sure they should set up an LLC or corporation, I'll explain, well, um, corporations, they have a board of directors and they have shareholders. So if you are setting up a business where you're maybe looking for some sort of um, investments uh, right away and you want to have options for shareholders, corporation will offer that. Where if you set up an LLC, LLCs are structured where they have members. Sometimes they also have managers. So typically LLCs are formed when those that have ownership in the LLC also handle the day-to-day -day activities due to the way they're structured. LLCs don't have shares. Um, and then compliance-wise, um, you know, where corporations, they have to keep meeting minutes to show that the board of directors and the shareholders are meeting each year to discuss how the corporation's working to turn a profit, you know, any other changes that may have occurred where LLCs don't keep meeting minutes. They don't have a board of directors. They don't have shareholders. They just have members. They can keep meeting minutes if they want, but it's not a compliance requirement. And then um, their state filing requirements. Most states do have an annual report. Um, so I will give them the fees and the frequency for that requirements. And then all entities in all 50 states must have a registered agent. So that's something we mentioned as well. And then on this subject, you're in an even better position than us to give information because then you can go into how they're taxed, where I have virtually I have very little information on how they're taxed. I don't file taxes. I can give them general, but that's about it. So that's also something that would be great to mention. And typically, once you've given all this information to your clients, even if they did just come out asking for advice, once they have been given this information, most of the time they don't need advice because all they needed was to have this information, and then they're usually able to clearly, you know, decide, okay, this one is what I need, or this one is what I need. However, if not, send them to an attorney. Um, also, to dimension, we have some really great tools on our site um, on this topic of choosing entity types. We have a chart that compares different entity types. We have a business structure wizard um, where you answer a bunch of questions, and then at the end, it tells you which entity type matches most uh, based on how you answer the questions. And there's also a widget where you can put that um, on your site if you'd like. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, next question. What about completing bylaws or other detailed documents to support the structure of business? I've heard only attorneys should do that since it could get complicated. That's also a very good question. So um, when... Uh, clients set up entities with us with our complete formation package, we ensure that they have all the documents they'll need to be able to open a bank account, which includes bylaws for corporation or operating agreements for LLCs. What we do with that document is we customize it based on the details the client has given us. So it may be customized based on the state. Is this a single member LLC, multi-member LLC? Is it member managed? Is it manager managed um, with corporations, you know, as well with the state? Um, and then we customize it based on the specific ownership details. Um, you know, do uh, the members, do they have a certain capital contribution amount? What's their percentage uh, of membership in this LLC? And then we send it to the client in an editable format. The great thing about operating agreements and bylaws is that two things. One, they are not final until they have been fully signed by all the members or all the directors, officers. And also they're not on file with the state. So while it is absolutely a requirement, um, it's not on file. So you have flexibility um, where you don't have to feel rushed to get your bylaws or operating agreement finalized, signed, 
um, and submitted somewhere, worry that maybe, you know, it's going to be rejected or that you have to update it. None of that. It's kept in your records. Um, you know, places like your bank will have it on file, but otherwise it's just in your records. And um, uh, it's so basically we're providing a fully customized document, just like you would be as a reseller. However, there is still room and opportunity for the client to add their own customization or to bring it to an attorney and have the attorney add in customization. So you're, you know, setting them up um, in a position where they will have a fully customized document ready to go to be signed and put in the records, or you're giving them an opportunity to add additional customizations based on what they need. And then um, again, as I mentioned, it's not, you know, the final version until it's signed. So it really, you know, puts you in a position where you're just providing them with the document customized based on the information they've given you and based on the information, um, you know, with the state and the structure, anything else is just up to their preference. Um, okay, let's see. Next question. Um, what if my client is unsure of the entity type they want to select for their business, how can I help them pick an option but avoid giving legal advice? So that's kind of um, similar to what I was discussing initially, you know, give them information on the different entity types, how they're structured, uh, what's the compliance like, how are they taxed? Um, and then if you also want to give them additional information or visuals, we have some awesome resources available to um, on our website or that your account manager can send you so you can actually show them you know in a chart format here is how this entity structured here is how this entity structured here's the differences and then I would definitely you know recommend whatever industry you specialize in uh, giving them information how it relates specifically to that whether it's tax legal and you know any other sort of information you can give them specific to you. Um, as a CorpNet partner, do you have any support available for the legal questions that may come up from clients I don't feel comfortable answering? Um, that is a great question. So um, one thing that we have as a disclaimer all over our website and our emails everywhere is that we are not attorneys. We're not offering legal services. We are not giving legal advice. However, this is something that people tend to be confused about or ask, oh, well, can I set up a call with an attorney? Um, we are not attorneys. We don't have attorneys. We don't give any sort of legal advice. Um, that's just not, you know, our, our practice. We're a document filing service. So um, we don't have any sort of legal advice. However, you do, uh, if you're a partner, you've been assigned to a dedicated account manager who is incredibly, um, you know, experienced, knowledgeable, there to help uh, customer service and making sure our partners have all the information and tools they need to comfortably offer our services to their clients is, you know, what's most important to us. So um, anything that you need help with, just let your account representative know. And if they don't know offhand, they'll find out for you and they will get back to you. So, um, you know, we're here to support you. And then just, you know, in the end, if it's just something where you feel like you're just not comfortable, uh, you know, it's not something you're familiar with, you do not want to offer this directly to your clients, just refer them, you know, refer them to your account rep, let us take care of it. You'll earn a nice referral fee and, or you can pass on your discount if you don't feel comfortable accepting referral fees and you'll have that, um, you know, uh, assurance that your clients is being taken care of and um, you won't have to uh, worry about doing anything you're uncomfortable with. So there are options for either one. Um, okay, and the last question that I see for now, if there's any other questions that come in, I'd be happy to answer them. Otherwise, just uh, feel free to post them after and we will reach out to you separately. Um, are there any liability ramifications when it comes to compliance items that I should be aware of? There are. Um, whenever somebody sets up an entity, there is compliance. There's some states like um, Pennsylvania, for example, they don't have an annual report or it's due like every 10 years. I don't think it's strictly enforced. Um, so in you know, some situations they don't have to file an annual report. So while it may be less likely that the state will reject their entity, it's still very important that they are staying compliant. And there are ramifications to not staying compliant. So just on the short term, say a LLC doesn't file their annual report. 
they will become suspended by the state. Some states like Texas um, or Florida, for example, or Delaware, they have a set date where if you have not filed your report by that date, you are getting suspended, you are going to get a certain amount of fees. Um, other states like California, for example, there's no real set time where they will suspend you. It just kind of happens <laughs> when the state uh, realizes that you have not filed. I'm not sure how their system works, but I've seen some entities pass to 10 years that aren't suspended, some pass to a year that are suspended. So it's it just depends. So that's why it's always best to make sure that your clients are aware um, of the compliance so they can stay compliant and in the short term and in the public record that they won't show as being suspended or in bad standing. And then otherwise, say something terrible happens and there's a lawsuit. Um, or for example, like when the pandemic started, everyone was trying to get those EIDL loans. And the first thing that you know entities have to do when they're applying is show they're compliant. Do you have an operating agreement? If you're a corporation, do you have annual meeting minutes for every year you've been in business? You know, so companies that could have gotten away with that in the past because you know nothing really came up where they needed it now are suddenly in trouble and they're scrambling to get all this done as soon as possible. So, you know, as um, a partner, as a professional where you're offering this service to your client, it's great for you to be able to inform your clients of this, you know, and really communicate that importance to them. And then it's a service that you can provide to them and make sure that there's no reason for them to ever be non-compliant. You know, when you're setting up their entity, make sure they have all those documents. If they're an LLC, you know, or a corporation, if you set them up with a complete package, they're going to have that operating room or bylaws. They're going to have a qualified registered agent. They're going to have everything they need, you know, to start off on a good foot. And then going forward, your corporate portal will alert you each year when their annual reports are due. So you'll be aware of that. You can relay that information to them and ensure that they, you know, started off with all the compliance items they need. And each year they have everything they need. So they're always in good standing. Anything comes up. And, you know, anytime they need to show their records, they will be compliant. They'll have everything they need. You know, worst case scenario, if there's a lawsuit against a company and it is not compliance, the corporate veil can be pierced, meaning that the ownership of the entity can be held personally responsible, which is every, you know, business owner's worst fear. Because part of the reason they set up a business entity is so that their assets will be separate from their business and, you know, protected. But that protection is not guaranteed to extend if your entity has gone into bad standing. So it's super important. Um, one thing I mentioned to my partners, which is a great idea, is whenever you set up an entity for your clients, offer them a yearly compliance package. Say, here's what I will charge you at the beginning of each year. And when you pay this fee, that means I'm automatically going to file all your annual reports as soon as they come due. I'm going to make sure you have a qualified registered agent on file. And if it's a corporation, I'm going to keep your meeting minutes. That way, you don't have to hunt them down every time something's due um, and collect payment because they've already paid you and you can put it on auto renew with us. So we know when an alert comes up in your portal, we can renew it because your clients paid you. So that's just a really great way to ensure that your clients have stayed compliant. It's a great revenue source every year, you know, the compliance package for all the clients of yours that set up entities or have entities. And then you're providing a really valuable service in helping them to ensure that their companies and their entities are compliant and they're in good standing and that, you know, they won't, um, you know, have any sort of liability ramifications due to compliance or anything else. It won't hinder their ability to get a loan, whatever else may come up. Um, so that looks to be all of the questions that have come in so far. Um, so I will go ahead and stop here. Um, as I mentioned, feel free to reach out in the comments with other questions, and we would be happy to get back to you with answers and more information. Um, also, as a reminder, our next Facebook Live is planned for September 9th at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and that topic is how to market services to clients. So um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this was valuable information. And if you guys have any questions, any suggestions, any topics, just feel free to reach out. And we would love to go over that. So thank you guys so much. Have a great weekend. And we will talk to you soon.